This morning's reading comes from the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark is a very challenging gospel because it leaves off the whole story. It leaves you wondering what happens next and struggling what it means for you, and that's the point. I'm going to read to you a familiar story. It's a story of an encounter of one man with Jesus at a very significant point in this man's life. You've heard it before, you know it well, but I invite you now to prayerfully listen with curiosity as if you've never heard this story before. Hear now the words from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 to 27. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man said to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the man heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around, and he said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed by these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. His disciples were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Here ends our reading from the Gospel according to Mark, from which the word of God springs forth. May it take root in your heart. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. It's been said that there are seven stages that you go through during the course of your life. It starts with spills before you move on to drills, thrills, bills, ills, pills, and wills. (laughs) It makes sense when you think about it. After all, when you're a toddler, you tend to spill your milk from time to time. Then it's off to school where you learn the drills that teach you how to read and write and do your arithmetic. Then, when you become a teenager, it's all about experiencing the thrills that life has to offer. Then, when you become an adult, life seems to revolve around the bills that have to be paid. Then, as you get older, you focus more and more on your ills and the pills that you take for those ills before you get to the will that will be there after you're gone. So, yes. Spills, drills, thrills, bills, ills, pills, and wills. Now, the fact that most people don't have a will suggests that people don't like to think about what's going to happen to them at the end of their lives. We don't like to think about death and dying. Although that wasn't the case for one man, who had to make a difficult decision as he was traveling through the Holy Land with his wife and mother-in-law. Unfortunately, while they were there, 
the mother-in-law became very ill and died unexpectedly. Before he knew it, the husband and his wife were meeting with an undertaker to decide what to do. The undertaker told them that they could send the mother-in-law home, but it would cost them about $10,000. Or the funeral director said, you could bury her right here in the Holy Land for about $1,000. The husband thought about it for a moment before making it very clear that he wanted to send his mother-in-law home. Are you sure, the funeral director asked, that's a lot of money. Look, uh, the husband said, 2,000 years ago, they buried a guy over here, and three days later, he rose from the dead. When it comes to my mother-in-law, I just can't take that chance. (laughs) Spills, drills, thrills, bills, ills, pills, and wills. As you make your way through the stages of life, there is a very important question that you need to ask yourself. And the question is simply this. Am I going to live my life for today, or am I going to live my life for tomorrow? A lot of people will tell you that the best thing you can do is live your life for today. Live your life for today because tomorrow may never come. So go ahead and buy that new car that you had your eye on the other day. Go home and watch the Patriots play this afternoon and don't worry about what may or may not happen tomorrow. Eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow may never come. Sounds good, doesn't it? But it is a simplistic and short-sighted way to live your life because tomorrow is going to come whether you like it or not. Tomorrow is going to come whether you're ready for it or not. Jesus knew that, which is why he doesn't want you to just live your life for today. Jesus wants you to think a little like the young man who came and asked him that question. Do you remember what the question was that he asked Jesus that day? Mark tells us that uh, the young man went to Jesus and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus wants you to think about that question as you live your life each and every day because Jesus knows that when you think about that question, when you think about eternity, it's going to help you live your life today. That's That's the problem that the young man had. You see, the fact that he asked the question about eternal life shows you that his head was in the right place. But the fact that he wasn't able to do what he needed to do in order to inherit eternal life shows you that his heart wasn't in the right place. His head in the right place. His heart not in the right place. You see, Jesus told him that if he really wanted to inherit eternal life, there were two things that he needed to do. The first thing he needed to do was obey the commandments. And when the young man heard that, he must have been very happy because according to the young man, he had been obeying the commandments since he was a little boy. But then Jesus, as Jesus often does, said something that the young man didn't want to hear. Mark tells us that Jesus looked at the young man and, loving him, said to him, you lack one thing. Go and sell everything that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Now, we need to be clear about one thing. Jesus didn't tell the young man to go and sell everything he had because he wanted the young man to live in poverty. In fact, if you go back and look at what Jesus actually said, you'll see that he told the young man not to go and sell everything he had and give everything to the poor. He told him to go and sell everything he had and give to the poor. So Jesus didn't tell the young man to sell everything because he wanted him to live in poverty. Jesus told the young man to sell everything because he knew that all of those material things were preventing the young man from experiencing 
and living his life and seeing what was really important in this life. Jesus knew that all of those material things were preventing the young man from experiencing the life that Jesus was talking about when he said, I have come that you might have life. And not just have life, but have it abundantly. Have any of you ever heard of a man by the name of Kemmons Wilson? Kemmons Wilson is the man who founded the chain of Holiday Inn hotels. He did that even though he never earned a high school diploma. The fact that he never earned a diploma is the reason why he was surprised when the high school he attended invited him to come back one year and speak at the school's graduation ceremonies. What Kemmons Wilson said that day was very interesting. What he said was, I really don't know why I'm here. I never got a degree, and I've only worked half a days my entire life. My advice to you is to do the same thing. Work half days every day. It doesn't matter which half you choose. You can work the first 12 hours or the second 12 hours. <laughs> and when you think about it, that's a really good way to live your life if you want to make a lot of money and accumulate a lot of worldly possessions. But it's not the way to live your life if you want to know what's really important in this life. Just look at Jay Gould. When Jay Gould was alive back in the late 1800s, he was one of the richest men in the entire world. Despite that fact, however, it didn't stop him from dying on December 2nd, 1892, and he died of tuberculosis. Despite all of his money, it is reported that as he was on his deathbed, the last thing he said was, I suppose I am the most miserable man on earth. So yes, Jesus doesn't want you to just live your life for today. He wants you to live your life for tomorrow. He wants you to live your life for eternity. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life. Jesus wants you to live your life for eternity because he knows that when you do that, it will help you understand what's really important in this life. He wants you to live for eternity because he knows that when you do that, it will make everything in this life better. Abigail Sailors saw that a little over a year ago when two men walked into the Cracker Barrel restaurant in Lincoln, Nebraska. Some of you may remember this. It was in the news. The two men told the hostess that they wanted the grumpiest person in the restaurant to wait on them so they could cheer the person up a little. When the hostess told them that they didn't have any grumpy people working in the restaurant, the two men sat down at one of Abigail's tables. While they were waiting for their food, they struck up a conversation. As they listened, they learned that when Abigail was a little infant, her mother suffered a devastating head injury in a car accident. Because of the head injury, the mother wasn't able to take care of Abigail. And shortly after the mother was in that accident, Abigail's father was sent to prison. So Abigail ended up in foster care, where her sister said they experienced all the foster care horror stories that you hear about. Well, life wasn't kind to Abigail, but she refused to let it get her down. She worked very hard, and she told the two men that she had enrolled at a Trinity College in South Dakota. Unfortunately, she had to drop out for a while because she needed to earn money for the tuition. Now this is where our amazing God sometimes does and works in mysterious ways. You see, because after the meal was over, the men paid their bill, and then something amazing happened. One of the men told Allison that he too 
had attended Trinity College in South Dakota, and he had graduated. At that point, he took out a $100 bill and put it on the table for Allison as a tip. He then took out his checkbook, and he wrote a check to Allison for $5,000 to pay for her tuition. And then he wrote another check to Allison for $1,000 to pay for her books and supplies. Now, my friends, things like that don't happen every day, but they do happen when you live for eternity. Amen.